In this video, I will be turning tin metal into tributyl tin hydride. Tributyl tin hydride is a useful source of hydrogen atoms in organic synthesis, and I will be needing it in the future. Since I also want to explore some organo tin chemistry, I will just be making it myself instead of buying it. So let's just get started and see how it goes. The tin I will be using are pieces that I made by melting a bar of tin and dripping it into a bucket of water. So the first step is to chlorinate tin to tin 4 chloride, for which I have already built the setup. The setup is similar to the chlorination setup for arsenic in my last video. But I have made some adjustments, so that it is hopefully more efficient and safe. So the left part is exactly the same as before. In the 3 neck flask, I will put TCCA, and in the dropping funnel hydrochloric acid. The produced chlorine will then go through the gas washing bottle that contains sulfuric acid, which will take out any water vapors. Then it will go upward to this small straight column adapter. In this adapter, I will put the tin, so the chlorine will react with it. Then any tin 4 chloride vapors will go down towards the condenser, condense and drip down into the receiving flask. Any vapors that go through will meet the trap at the end, which is just a beaker with a sodium thiosulfate solution. In case there are suck back, I have placed the flask in between the trap and the apparatus. This will prevent the solution from getting pulled directly into my receiving flask. So I load up the adapter with about 50 grams of tin and then close it off again. I put a bunch of TCCA in the flask and 37% hydrochloric acid in the dropping funnel. Now that everything is complete, I can start the reaction. So I open the dropping funnel to start the chlorine production. To get the reaction to start, I heat the glass with a heat gun. After about 10 seconds of heating, vapor started to form in the adapter. After a while, I stop the heat since the reaction will be able to sustain itself. The tin starts melting from the heat and we can see a bunch of yellow liquid and white vapors forming. But it wouldn't be a Cameolis video without a little fill. The angle of the apparatus was tilted a little too much and suddenly the liquefied tin started flowing into the condenser and receiving flask. This caused the collected tin 4 chloride in the receiving flask to boil, and part of the vapors forced itself through the trap. Luckily, it didn't all disappear. The tin that is now in the receiving flask is still extremely hot, because it is reacting with dissolved chlorine, which is not the most optimal. Anyhow, after a while, pretty much all of the tin in the adapter has reacted. When I was producing the arsenic 3 chloride in my last video, it wasn't this hot, and the chloride mostly became a liquid right away. But this wasn't the case here. The tin got so hot that it melted, and all tin 4 chloride vaporized right away. So it has to condense further into the apparatus. What is probably better is to put two condensers, with an extra one added right next to the adapter. Also, a slight ink line is not really necessary if it all vaporizes so it can just lay fully horizontally, so that the tin doesn't move. Anyhow, I am now left with a bunch of impure fuming tin for chloride. It is very sensitive to moisture, so it contains some solid hydrate, and there might also be some tin 2 chloride. It also contains dissolved chlorine, which is coloring it yellow. So to purify it, I will set it up for short path vacuum distillation. The boiling point of tin 4 chloride is only 114 C, which makes it easy to boil over. Any tin metal, tin 4 chloride hydrate or tin 2 chloride will stay behind in the flask, and the chlorine will get kicked out. When the distillation is finished, I am left with some clear tin 4 chloride, in a disappointing yield of about 20%. So I replaced the stopper with a septum, and will now transfer some of it to another flask, since we will be needing some of it later. So I puncture the septum, and take up 3 ml of the tin 4 chloride. I then inject it into the other flask and set it on the side. Now to the flask containing the bulk of the tin 4 chloride, I inject 65 ml of dry toluene and then mix it around. I put it on the side and can now start the next step. So I set up a 3 neck flask and attach a dropping funnel. Now to the dropping funnel, I first add 45 ml of 1 chlorobutane. Then I add 75 ml of dry toluene and 35 ml of anhydrous THF. Now I attach a condenser to the flask, drop in a stir bar, and then add 40 grams of magnesium turnings. I cover the magnesium with a bunch of anhydrous THF, and then flush the flask with argon. I stopper the left neck, and then set the flask in the heating mantle, and start heating it. I open the dropping funnel to let some of the mixture into the flask, and then add some iodine to remove magnesium oxides from the surface of the metal and expose fresh magnesium. In this reaction, the Grignard reagent is prepared. The magnesium will react with the 1-chlorobutane to form the Grignard reagent butyl magnesium chloride. After a while, the mixture boiled vigorously and stuck some magnesium to the glass, but it was still fully contained. I keep adding the mixture from the dropping funnel 
at a rate that allows the reaction mixture to reflux normally. When everything had been added, I left it to stir under heat for 20 minutes. Now to the dropping funnel, I quickly add in the tin 4 chloride toyweed mixture without bothering to do it with a syringe. I stop it again and then slowly start dropping the mixture into the reaction flask. I add it at such a rate so that it is refluxing normally. In this reaction, the Grignard reagent reacts with the tin 4 chloride in a simpler way than regular Grignard reactions. Here the butyl groups can attach themselves to the tin and kick off the magnesium chloride and form tetrabutyl tin instantly without the need for hydrolysis of the product. When all of the mixture had been added, I removed the dropping funnel and left the mixture to reflux for about 3 hours. When it is done, I added some hydrochloric acid to the mixture and pour it all into a large beaker. I washed the flask several times with concentrated hydrochloric acid and kept adding acid until no more reaction took place. This was to destroy any remaining Grignard reagent and tin 4 chloride as well as removing any remaining magnesium. I then moved the mixture to a separatory funnel and separated the layers. I then pour the organic layer back into the separatory funnel and wash it once with water, once with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and once with a saturated sodium chloride solution. I then take the washed organic layer and add a bunch of sodium sulfate to dry it. I then filter the mixture to some cotton directly into a flask. I then distill the filtrate with short path distillation to boil off the THF and toluene. After a while, it stops coming over, so I swap the receiving flask. I then pull a light vacuum on the setup and more comes over. When all of that has come over, I swap the receiving flask again. Tetrabutyl tin has a high boiling point, so I increase the temperature, pull a vacuum and insulate the flask with some aluminum foil. I also assist the distillation with a heat gun and after a bit, the tetrabutyl tin starts coming over. After a while, I collected all of the tetrabutyl tin and the yield turned out to be 82%. Now I can move on with the next step, which is a comproportionation reaction. So what I want is tributyl tin chloride, but I have tetrabutyl tin. So to make tributyl tin chloride, I can use the tin 4 chloride that is set aside at the beginning. In the reaction, the tin 4 chloride and tetrabutyl tin will swap their chloride and butyl groups until they all become balanced. If the mixture contains 1 fourth tin 4 chloride, and 3 4th tetrabutyl tin, it will all become tributyl tin chloride. So I take up 1.1 mL of the tin 4 chloride with a needle and syringe and then inject it into the flask with the tetrabutyl tin. The reaction produces a little bit of heat and the mixture turns yellow, probably from some impurity. Now that I have the tributyl tin chloride, I can move on with the next step where I will be making tributyl tin hydride. So I set up a flask and drop in a stir bar. I then add 60 mL of anhydrous diethyl ether. Now I will add some lithium aluminum hydride, but it comes in little tablets, so I crushed it into a powder and add 1.66 grams of it to the flask. I then wash the sides and the neck of the flask with some more ether. Now I attach a dropping funnel and pour in all of the tributyl tin chloride. I then open the dropping funnel and dropwise add the tributyl tin chloride to the flask. When all of it has been added, I set the flask in a heating mantle and reflux the mixture overnight. In this reaction, the lithium aluminum hydride will simply donate a hydrogen atom and take up the chlorine atom to produce tributyl tin hydride. When I come back the next day, the mixture has turned brown and the reaction should be finished. So I take the flask off heat and then set it in an ice bath. I let it cool down and then add 160 mg of 4 methoxyphenol, which will quench any radicals and work as a stabilizer for the tributyl tin hydride. Now, to destroy any remaining lithium aluminum hydride, I dropwise add 4 mL of water to the flask. When that is done, I quench the mixture with 150 mL of a 20% potassium sodium tartrate solution. I then add 50 mL of diethyl ether and move all of the contents to a separatory funnel. Since there are some solids, I can't drain away the water layer, so I will just pour most of the diethyl ether out. I then wash the flask with 50 mL of diethyl ether and pour it into the sep funnel. I then shake the sep funnel to extract the water layer and pour out the ether layer again. Still, a lot of the water layer has come with it, so I decant the ether layer carefully into another beaker. I then dry the ether with some sodium sulfate. I filter the mixture to some cotton directly into a flask, and then set it up for short pass distillation to boil off all of the ether. After a while, I connect the setup to a vacuum pump and pull a vacuum to pull over any remaining ether. 
When all of the ether has been pulled out, I swap the receiving flask. I now pull a strong vacuum on the setup, increase the heat and distill over the tributyl tin hydride with the help of a heat gun. When all of it has come over, all that is left is some orange stuff, likely some form of toxiphenol and impurities. Now I have the tributyl tin hydride, but it seems some impurity is present as a white solid, likely some tin compound because my distillation apparatus probably wasn't fully clean from the previous distillations. So to get it out, I set up a funnel with a small bit of chemically resistant glass wool and filter it all through, directly into a vial. When all of it has been filtered, I am left with a clear liquid. The final yield turned out to be 40%. Unfortunately, I can't characterize it other than seeing that its boiling point is similar to the literature and that it is a clear liquid. Anyhow, that was it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.